Welcome to Bible Study with Fred. I'm in part two of my comments on 1 Peter 3, 8 to 17. I hope you'll read that that passage and listen to the video from yesterday. So let's just jump right in to the second part of my comments on that passage. Verse 12 has its cross-reference in Psalm 34, 15 and 16. Psalm 34, 15 and 16 say, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are opened under their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, and to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Now, verses 10 and 11 present an interesting lesson in understanding the Bible for us. If you notice the not-so-archaic word eschew in verse 11, you can see the words let him and evil surround it. If you did not know the definition of askew, you could search in the nearby verses for what those same words surround. In the case of verse 10, they surround the words refrain his tongue from, which then gives you the definition of askew and its application in this context. Be alert to this as you read the Bible, and you will find similar instances in other parts of the Bible. It is impossible to understand the Bible without not only reading it in context, but comparing verses, cross-referencing. See Psalm 34, 13, and 14 for cross-references. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. That's Psalm 34, 13, and 14. Peter in verses 10 and 11 make another important point. Makes another important point. If you want to have a good life, keep your mouth from spouting malicious, mean-spirited, and deceitful words. Seek after peace. Pursue it. James make a, makes a point not unlike this. James 3, 3 to 12. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, and yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain but yield both both yield salt water and fresh. For a happier life with less drama, more glorifying to God, control your mouth. God looks over those who try to do what is right and glorifying to him in our behavior and speech and hears their prayers. But he is he is opposed to those who choose to do maliciously, to do evil. Who is a Christian's enemy if he's doing right? It can only be Satan himself working through those he has deceived and uses. When we suffer for righteousness' sake, we are not to be afraid or troubled. We are to set God apart in our hearts, always ready to give an answer to why we believe and have faith in whom we believe and in whom we have faith. We're to do this in meekness, doing what is right and accepting God's will for our lives and in the fear of the Lord, which is all in reverence. Psalm 45, 45, 4. In thy majesty ride prosperly, prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. In thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Zephaniah 2, 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye the meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be well ye shall find. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Psalm 33, 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Hebrews 12, 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. With a good conscience, let others speak badly for you of you for no reason, when your good deeds are condemned because they are good. And of course, it's much better for you, much more glorifying to God, if you're slandered for doing right than for doing wrong. Unfortunately, too many Christians in America are arrogant and self-serving because we have been prominent since long before the country's founding. But God is turning that in a different direction now, so that we will be marginalized and forced to act as God would have us act, rather than feeling so smug and self-righteous. All right, I'm asking you to read your Bible, study your Bible, cross-reference the verses again, and pray to God for wisdom and understanding, and then share your interpretation with someone else. Let God speak to you through his word today. And you can, uh, you, I don't have this published on Amazon, I have other commentaries on Amazon, but you can follow me on Blogger. Uh, dot com. And if you watch this video this far, please click like and subscribe or follow. And thank you.